This is the histology segment for the male reproductive system illustrating the testis for anatomy 2203. Please examine slide number 31, testis, for the following structures. Even with the scanning objective, which is shown here, these particular items can be made out even at this very low magnification. This surrounding capsule of the testis, relatively thick, is known as the tunica albiginia, or the white tunic. Scattered within the substance of the testis itself, one can uh, make out numerous tubules cut in cross-section and are being illustrated by the pointer. These are referred to as the seminiferous tubules and contain the germinal epithelium. In between seminiferous tubules, and indicated by the pointer, is the interstitial tissue. This delicate connective tissue, rich in vasculature and lymphatics, will contain an important cell type known as the Leydig cell, or an interstitial cell. And this particular cell type produces the hormone testosterone uh, for the male. And if one moves the field, One can see numerous seminiferous tubules cut in cross-section and this scenario, that is seminiferous tubules surrounded by this delicate interstitial tissue repeats itself over and over again. Having once load and scanned the field with the low power objective, then go to a higher power objective and examine a seminiferous tubule and the interstitial tissue for various cell types. This is portion of the testis seen at high magnification illustrating a seminiferous tubule here with this stratified epithelium being the germinal epithelium, a portion of a seminiferous tubule located here, and of course its germinal epithelium, and a portion of one here interposed between the seminiferous tubules and indicated by the arrow is the interstitial tissue and contains several interstitial cells. Very large cells as indicated by the tip of the pointer. These are acidophilic cell. Uh, here is an interstitial cell or a cell of Leydig. And you can see it has a fairly abundant cytoplasm. Another one is shown here and being outlined by the pointer. And several others are in the field are demonstrated in the field as well. So these large reddish acidophilic cells are uh, quite large in the interstitial tissue, that is the key, it has to be in the interstitial tissue, are the Leydig cells. These cells are the ones, as mentioned earlier, produce the male hormone testosterone. Now if one course is around Perhaps here they're a little bit be better separated, more easily visualized. This large cell here is a Leydig cell. I'll try to trace it with its central nucleus. This large cell here is a Leydig cell, and this one here. It's absolutely critical that these cells be located in the interstitial tissue. Otherwise, you're dealing with another uh, cell type. Next, examine the interior of the seminiferous tubules for the germinal epithelium. And note that it consists of two basic cell population. A supporting cell population made up of Sertoli cells. One is shown here, or the nucleus is shown here. It's characterized by a euchromatic type of nucleus, that is, it's finely stippled. And if you have a good one, it always shows a very distinct nucleolus, as indicated at the tip of the pointer. This cell type extends from the basement membrane all the way to the luminal surface, even though the cytoplasmic boundaries of this particular supporting cell cannot be made out. There's another fairly decent Sertoli cell shown here at the tip of the pointer. Let me move the field up just a little bit so we can trace it. So this particular cell type extends from here all the way to the lumen. And it's characterized by 
a finely stippled euchromatic nucleus and a distinct nucleolus. Now what you have to be aware of, these are extraordinarily large cells that always uh, is there a section going to pass through the nucleus or the nucleolus. And because it is a tubule and cut at different angles, uh, even though this is a classic example, uh, they do look subtly different if sectioned in a different uh, way. So let me point out Sertoli cells. Here is a Sertoli cell nucleus. This is a Sertoli cell, though it looks a little bit funny. Sertoli cell, Sertoli cell, Sertoli cell. And if we move this field down just a little bit so we can get up to the other tubule, and you can see they're sort of uh, scattered along at very uniform distances one from the other. So this is the nucleus of a Sertoli cell, its cytoplasm is coursing up this way. Here's the nucleus of a Sertoli cell, its cytoplasm goes in this direction. Nucleus of a Sertoli cell, it's going like this. Another Sertoli cell showing like here. The nucleus of another Sertoli cell going up. Nucleus of another Sertoli cell, its cytoplasm going up in this direction. So you can see they're equidistantly scattered along this epithelium and span the space from the basal lamina all the way to the lumen. So that is the supporting framework, these Sertoli cells, these supporting or nurse cells. Now in between Sertoli cells and rising up and running along their lateral borders, as shown here, we have the spermatogenic cells. So the spermatogenic cells divide here and then migrate along the lateral surfaces of the Sertoli cells and as a spermatozoan is formed it's exfoliated or released into the lumen. Now with very careful observation one can see some of the sort of the germ cells, the beginnings. These are spermatogonia here hugging the basement membrane and sort of have this oval shaped uh, character to them. So this would be a spermatogonium, a spermatogonium. They release from this basement membrane, become primary spermatocytes. As one can see here, these cells are in uh, meiotic division. Several here. Each one of these is a primary spermatocyte. They will then become secondary spermatocytes and I don't see any good ones here, and then these will divide and become immature spermatids, and many of these are shown here, these little round cells. So these are early spermatids. They will then undergo a metamorphosis, so to speak, change their shape, and have a little arrowhead shaped nucleus that's uh, shown here. So these are late spermatids, you can see some here still within the cytoplasm of the supporting Sertoli cell and finally they will be released into the lumen as spermatozoa. So those are some of the cell types one can see uh, quite easily when you examine this particular section under the microscope. And here we can see these are a little bit more mature uh, late spermatids. One can see the nucleus here and if you look very carefully, this little thin line coming up here are the tail or the flagella of these spermatozoa. So they will then migrate up and then be released into the lumen, which is shown here, and actually contains the tails of numerous spermatozoa. Now I was just looking carefully to see if we could see any that are actually uh, have been released into the lumen of uh, the seminiferous tubule. This is a portion of the lumen of a seminiferous tubule showing you the tails, cross sections of the tails of numerous spermatozoa just prior to being released into the seminiferous tubule. Another portion of a seminiferous tubule showing you the underlying spermatogenic cells, occasional uh, Sertoli cell can be made out, but the nuclei of most of these cells are, these are all primary spermatocytes, early spermatids, and then late spermatids, which are just, yeah, I bring that into focus a little bit, just prior to the release, where you can see the little arrowhead of the nuclear profile is very condensed, and then the, all the flagella within the lumen. So these are just prior to being released by the Sertoli cell 
into the lumen as free swimming uh, spermatozoa or sperm. And finally, a segment showing them sort of the release of the spermatozoa by the Sertoli cells into the lumen. See, just being discharged here, you can see the nuclear profiles and their tails. Residual bodies is this debris here that is going to be phagocytized by the Sertoli cell. So these are the various cell types one can recognize. If we just focus up and down here just a little bit, the Leydig cells are in the interstitial tissue, sometimes known as interstitial cells. Remember, these cells are producing the male hormone testosterone. This is the edge of a seminiferous tubule showing the germinal epithelium, which is a stratified type of epithelium. And some of the cell types one can recognize even at this power are cells such as this, which is the Sertoli cell because of this distinct nucleolus. Uh, there's one here too, that, uh, but it doesn't show a good nuclear profile. And these other smaller oval shaped cells right along the base are various types of cells of the spermatogenic series known as spermatogonia. They will then become the primary spermatocytes in meiosis. Then we'll get into some other dividing cells known as secondary spermatocytes, which will then become spermatids. And you can, uh, in a different tubule, you can recognize both a early and a late uh, spermatid. Uh, your primarily responsible, I believe, is to recognize the Leydig cells, Sertoli cells, and the others as spermatogenic cells.